Thank you for choosing ProtoWizard. In this tutorial we are going to illustrate how to import curves and use those curves with a tool to do some simple following of the path type of operations. We're also going to show how to use custom supports. We're going to start out by selecting the cross part. Notice that the cross has several settings that go all the way through. We're going to import some circle curves to go inside of each one of those settings. We're also going to import a DXF file that has L-shaped curves that will allow us to do finish profiles of the four edges of the part. The first thing we're going to do is insert supports. In wizard, we have the ability to create all of these custom shapes. And these custom shape supports are really quite quite interesting and give you quite a few options besides just having a simple square or rectangle. For example, this particular shape is a trapezoid shape that tapers in all directions. So where it attaches to the part is quite small, but it very quickly gets thicker and becomes stronger to hold your part in. This is quite similar to using a conical tool. You just select points out on the ends wherever you want your part. Now notice we have one that we didn't quite uh, go where we wanted it to go. So we're going to select edit support, so I'm going to select support number two. And you can see how it has turned, turned green. I'm going to go ahead and move this in the minus x direction, half a millimeter at a time, until I get it about where I want it. You could also take these supports and you can rotate them as well in the different directions. Something a little more. So you can see we can rotate these things in all different forms and directions, however we might want to to utilize them. Okay. And if you ever wanted to get rid of one, if you didn't like it, you can go ahead and just set, select delete. That support's gone. Now the next one on the list becomes the active. Now if I want to go back and add another support, I just simply get out of my edit supports and come back down and just select the point where I want to add one. And there we go. You can also combine different supports as well. You don't have to use the same one for every one that you have in here. You can use different supports anytime you want to. So if I wanted to edit these supports, and we'll just say, uh, let's delete a couple of them. Let's delete that one. And we'll delete this one. Now I'm going to go back here and switch to a different style of support. Maybe we'll pick a, uh, a cone shape support. Okay, so now I can come over here and select the, the, the cone shape support, get out of edit. And insert my cone shape. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and import these curves that we were talking about. So we'll say import DXF, and I'm going to select the cross holes. And then I'm again going to import the cross outline. Now these could actually be all in one file if you wanted to. It was just that these were created as separate files. Now you notice you don't see anything happening on the screen right now. This is because nothing really has taken place. We haven't utilized these curves. We've just brought them into our environment. What we're going to do now is go ahead and say we want to do a, a single side cut on this part. Or you could select two sides, since this is really essentially a two-sided part. And just for speed reasons, we're going to select a tool that's going to calculate a little quicker for us uh, to, to demonstrate some of the functions and features in here. We'll set up our cutting boundary. And in this particular case, we're going to want to cut all the way from one side to the other side. That's okay. 
Add that to program one. And now we're going to go ahead and select our curves. And again, you would select the tool. And you can give it whatever description you want. There's no default description in curves because it all depends on what you want to call them. And now if you notice, you can see there are little red circles in the center of these holes that have come in. Or I could choose the outlines, which are the L-shaped lines that have run along the sides of the part. We'll start out with the holes. We'll choose those first. We'll add this to program two. We're going to run the uh, curves again. Say C3, excuse me, C2. And select the outline curves. Again, we'll add this to program two. So now in our operation list, we have program one, we have the multi-sided flip, and in program two, we have curves. We'll simply select calculate. Okay, now here's our toolpath for our curves. It's our multi-sided uh, toolpath. That's the top side, and then this is the bottom side coming up. Okay. Now if we look at our curves toolpath, the first one, where are all of our holes? And here are our operations lifting up to the clearance plane between each move. And you can see that we literally moved into each one of these little holes and cut those out. Now if we want to look at the second set of curves, you can see that we cut a profile shape all around the part. Then after this, you would simply go in and generate your program file by hitting Create Machine. Use your default file name or give it a new name. Now you have Program 1 and Program 2 for the cross.